an old lunatic asylum, underground tunnel of death, abandoned mansion, cursed ancient ruins, and a terrifying old jail. These are five of the scariest haunted locations and amazing pieces of paranormal evidence that have been captured within them. Hey Crypt Keepers, thank you for tuning into Amy's Crypt. I cannot believe that this is the last video of the year. So I thought to send off 2019 in style, I would go back and review some of my best pieces of paranormal evidence at some of the scariest haunted locations that I have visited and made videos for in the past year. I also hope that this gets you guys excited for 2020 coming up. I have so many cool things planned, so many big, amazing locations coming real soon for you guys in the new year. Now I wanted to kick this list off with a location that really blew my mind in terms of paranormal evidence and I wasn't too surprised that it actually did because this location is so notorious within the paranormal community for its hauntings and this makes total sense when reflecting on its history and I am of course talking about the Aradale Lunatic Asylum in regional Victoria, Australia. This mental health facility opened in the late 1800s and was open through until the 1990s. It was very notorious for its poor living conditions as well as the treatment methods that were used here which included electroshock therapy as well as the lobotomy. Me. There were many, many deaths within the Aradale Asylum also. It's said that estimates of around 13,000 deaths occurred here, so it's very understandable why there are so many ghost stories circulated about Aradale. One of the main reasons that I chose to talk about Aradale on this video was I actually had a couple of weird experiences myself there. The very first one that I can recall was I felt as though I heard a man say, hey, right in my ear and this was why unfortunately we weren't rolling our cameras because we were actually on a public tour now when this happened to me my instinct was it's jared trying to whisper something to me so i turned around and there was nobody standing near me jared was meters away from me this also happened in one of the most haunted areas of the asylum and that is the men's ward where they kept the most dangerous of their patients but the tour guide was talking and i heard a man whispered in my ear, ear and said, hey. Like this? Hey. Yeah. I actually thought it was Jared. So I was, It was not me though. It wasn't. I was listening and I heard, hey. And I turned around and Jared's like two meters away from me. So I don't know what that was. That was really, really weird. Now, unfortunately we did miss this on camera, but I do bring it up because we returned to this same location later in the night and I had a very similar experience, which was actually captured on camera. So interestingly, I felt as though I heard a man's voice coming from behind me trying to say something. Jared did not hear this at all, but the camera's audio actually managed to pick it up. Uh, maybe the doorway. Did you hear that? No, but that door's open. I just heard a man's voice yell behind me. I didn't hear that, but this door is supposed to be closed because we're not supposed to go in there. Now I'll tell you what guys, this wasn't the only time that this happened to me at Aradale. Interestingly, when we were in a different area of the asylum, we were investigating a bathroom inside the matron's quarters. And I felt as though I heard a real loud, deep breath. I, I stated this at the time and I said, oh, did, did you say something? Did you hear that to Jared? He didn't hear a thing, but then when we reviewed the audio later, it does sound as though we picked up a voice, which is kind of cool because it's as if Jared's looking over the toilet door at someone and someone's in there. Take a listen. I believe that the voice sounds like it's saying hello, but let me know if you can hear something different. Hello patient, I'm just checking on you in there. Oh. What was that? I said, oh. Just before you said, oh, I had a. <sighs> now, I actually think that this is really cool and really amazing that I heard something in the moment with my own ears 
that Jared did not hear. And just to reiterate what I heard, the camera audio actually managed to pick these up. And in the replay, it actually sounds as though there are voices, like we are not in that room alone, like there's somebody else there. We did manage to get another EVP, which was a little bit similar to the one that we captured in the bathroom, which I just showed you. This was actually in a separate uh, area of the asylum. This was in the women's ward. Again, in the bathroom, I kind of dared Jared to go through by himself because it was really it had a thick scary atmosphere in there so I said you go through he goes through by himself films over the top of one of the bathroom stall doors again and once again it sounds like a voice is picked up on the camera so I'm gonna roll that one for you guys now Now there is so much that we picked up on and so much that happened at Aradao. It's a massive, amazing location. So I'm gonna be linking the video for the Aradao Asylum below as well as all of the other videos that I cover here today. And I really recommend if you guys haven't seen them before that you go back and revisit them because I mean, especially Aradao, we captured some of the best evidence I think that we have ever captured at this location. All right, Crypt Keepers, moving on to our next haunted location. This one is in Baguio of the Philippines, and this is reported to be a super, super haunted city. And I did visit a lot of the spooky locations here, but there was one that kind of stood out for me, probably one of the more underrated haunted locations in Baguio, and that is the Japanese tunnel. So there is actually a system of underground tunnels that are just below the ground of Baguio, and they span pretty far. These were actually occupied and used by the Japanese during World War II and some pretty dark things happened down there including the deaths of many, many Japanese soldiers. So basically the story goes that the US military gained some information and allowed them to learn that the Japanese were occupying these tunnels and that they were going to use the tunnels against them. So they thought that they would act first and they actually bombed sealing off all of the entrances and exits to this tunnel. Henceforth trapping a lot of people within the tunnels. Now unfortunately this led to the deaths of many many people. A lot of people committed suicide down there because they preferred not to starve to death and then there were some who were a little more hopeful thinking that maybe one day they could get out so they actually resorted to cannibalism to stay alive just that little bit longer. Now during this investigation I honestly was incredibly distracted. I felt incredibly ill that day but I thought I would soldier on because this was a location that I really really wanted to check out and share with you guys and I've got to admit that whilst we were filming I didn't really think that we picked up on much and it wasn't until I later reviewed the footage that I realized that we had got some interesting stuff in there. So one of the first things that I kind of noticed was as I was reaching out to the spirits there were some noises such as make a sound after I had asked uh, them to make a sound. So I'm going to roll a, a little bit of a clip now for you guys just to show you that. Can you make a noise? That is not the most interesting thing that happened in this tunnel that we captured on camera. There was actually one part of the footage where we caught a weird mist forming right in front of me. To me, it kind of looked like when you are somewhere very cold and you have that cold breath come out of your mouth and you can actually visibly see it. It looked a lot like that, but I'll play it for you guys and you'll see that it is far too low to be coming out of my own mouth. Is there anyone in this tunnel with us? Can you make a noise or show yourself? 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 Now I did think that this was very weird so I put it to you guys, what do you believe that it was? And there was a number of you who thought that it was something paranormal, something supernatural. I play it back after reading all your comments, I can kind of see where you're coming from that it looks as if there is someone who's shorter than me standing near me and it's their breath. 
Now there were a couple of you who were a bit more skeptical of that, which you know is fantastic. I'm a skeptic myself. And they said that it could be some kind of natural mist forming. This happens in caves, especially when they're quite damp apparently. I do have to admit this cave was quite damp and there were some particles flying around in the air, but there was nothing that looked quite like this weird mist thing that formed in any of the other footage. So I wanted to share with you guys because I thought that it was very interesting. All right, so on to our next location. This one actually brings us to Malaysia and into the very terrifying Bukit Tunku Mansion. And man, just one look at this place, it sends chills down your spine. But to know that a woman who used to live there actually committed suicide within the house makes it far more chilling. Now it's a little bit of a mystery as to what transpired with the family who lived within the house once their family member, this lady, had committed suicide, but eventually this house was left in abandonment and is now fully reclaimed by the jungle as you guys will see but there are a lot of rumors that say that this family actually left because they became haunted after this woman's death now I did choose this location for this list because it is particularly scary but all that aside we did actually manage to pick up on some very interesting evidence now the first thing that I want to share with you guys is actually what could be an EVP it really really sounds like some somebody's voice and it makes me question if we were actually there in that house alone it really sounds like there's someone with us so this was during a time that I was just getting my phone set up to run a ghost tube session and Jared was just rolling waiting for me to be ready and as we were just standing there I was fiddling around with my phone you can hear a voice which does not sound like either of us and when I first edited the footage I actually thought that the voice was saying okay but now that I listen to it back all this time later there's more of a s like a tone um, at the beginning of the okay, almost as if it's saying so okay. I'll play it for you guys, but take a close listen. Let me know if you think that you can understand what it is saying. Keep in mind as well, we are in Malaysia, so it's not necessarily saying something in English. Now there were some other weird noises that we picked up on within the abandoned mansion that were of interest to me. Some of these were bangs that we recorded that sounded as though they were upstairs, which is kind of interesting considering you can't get up to the second level of this place. It is way too dilapidated. There's also no floor. <laughs> the second level doesn't really exist anymore. Now you do have to keep in mind there were a lot of bats and animals here as well as this place literally falling apart. So it definitely could have been a natural noise but these ones do sound a little bit weird. That is not guano. I don't know what that is. something moving up there but not necessarily bad. In addition to these noises we also picked up on a noise which sounds very much like a branch snapping. Not just a small twig or something it sounds like it's got a bit of you know meat to it. We also had another weird noise that sounded very much like a footstep right near me and we get the footstep noise just after I say oh like I feel weird like I had some weird kind of Ugh, shivers down my spine. I feel like a bit weird. Can you make a noise very close to me so that I know that you're here?
Now, of course, we also conducted a spirit box session here, and there were a couple of words that we heard come through that were a little bit, ooh, okay, that's a bit odd. The first one being ma, and this seemed kind of relevant because the woman who committed suicide in the house was actually a mother. I just heard ma or mum. Now there was another voice that seemed to very clearly say hello, which I thought was pretty cool. Heard that. And then the last one, I swear I can hear a, a voice saying evil through the spirit box. So one more thing that actually happened personally to me while we're standing in this house was I felt something going up my leg and it was something heavy gripping my leg. There was a bit of weight to it. We were in a abandoned mansion that is very, very overgrown. So it could have been an animal or it was probably like a bloody tarantula or something climbing up my leg. But when I did feel it, I obviously go, oh, okay, I've got to suss out my leg. It seemed fine, there was nothing there. We were in complete darkness. I can't tell you that that's paranormal, but it was a little bit scary for me. Kanapa Awa. I feel like there's something crawling up my fucking leg. That's weird. I'm, I'm not fucking around, it felt like there was something heavy on my leg. Now the very last interesting thing that happened here was probably not paranormal but I always think maybe this could have added to energy which could have helped us get these other pieces of energy and that was seeing bright flashing light from outside the house while we were inside and they're so bright that it almost looks as if someone is taking a photograph with the flash on. So what I seen guys was a flash of light almost like someone was taking a photo out just out there. We're in a vacant lot in this abandoned house. We're completely alone. Like I'm for once not fearful that there's actually gonna be squatters or anyone here. So it's very odd to see. Now I had experiences at another haunted location in India in the past. And I learned from you guys, my viewers, my subscribers, that it could have been heat lightning. Now I don't see any physical, actual lightning in the sky. It's just as if the sky lights up. And that happened a number of times while we're in this house. So I always wonder, oh, maybe there was a little bit of energy going on there that could have helped the spirits communicate with us. All right, guys, so let's move on to our number two location. This one is said to be the most haunted place in India, Bangor Fort. And it was amazing how many people suggested this location to me. As soon as people found out that I was visiting India, everyone was saying, you need to visit this location. So how could I not? The most haunted place in the country. I gotta go see that. Now this place, Bangor Fort, actually dates back to the 17th century and is said to be incredibly haunted as well as cursed. And it is so haunted that you are not allowed there at night because it is believed if you visit at night, the ghost will not let you return and basically you die. Now there are a couple of legends as to why this place is haunted and cursed. One involves a curse from a local guru. The other involves it being cursed by a sort of sorcerer. Whether there's any truth behind these, it's not really known, but this place is very notorious and feared by a lot of people in India. So one thing that actually scared me and concerned me the most about this was while we were there at night of filming we were approached by a security personnel and actually told us that there are tigers and leopards in this area who have been known to attack and kill people so that really freaked me out and you know things like that scare me a lot more than ghosts ever will now the one main thing that I wanted to discuss with you guys is actually quite a personal thing that happened to me while we were at the fort and it just overtook me it was a really intense feeling and i actually had to leave the area that we were in we had ventured deep into the belly of the fort and i just i'm not one to leave a location while we're investigating 
but this place I had to get out of it. I had to leave. Now just a bit of background information. Jared and I spent about a month filming in India and I was sick for almost the entire month. And the couple of days leading up to before we went to Bangor, I was incredibly ill. But you know, I thought I'm gonna power on through this. I have to go see Bangor Fort. We have to go film it. I need to show this to you guys on my channel. So we went for it. And as we ventured into the belly of the fort, I began to feel really ill. There was one room in particular that we stood to do a spirit box and I'll tell you what I actually felt like I was gonna I was gonna vomit everywhere it was disgusting. I admit it stunk in there there was a lot of bats hanging around living in there and it stunk like it was horrible but you know I was like no this is where I feel weird this is where we should do a spirit box. So we began the spirit box and we were doing it in there until I just was overwhelmed. I had to get out. I freaked out a little bit to be honest. I went really dizzy, faint, and I felt like I was going to throw up and I had to leave the room. Now interestingly as I left I felt so much better. Just that bit of fresh air might have done it but it was almost like an instant, you know, Thing. It just like I was a lot more relieved leaving that room than I was staying in it and you know I caught my breath I had some water got some air and I did feel better I carried on the rest of the day and the night and I was fine It was just that one moment in that room that really really got to me. I actually feel a bit sick I need to get out of here Right, so we were just in One of the rooms in in the fort and it was very dark in there and it was stunk so bad of bad and I felt started I had to leave I felt really sick and I feel really really faint right now like I just felt really dizzy in that room although chucking this little hissy fit and leaving is pretty out of character for me I'm also not one to get overcome by physiological symptoms when I'm around the paranormal I it's very rare that I pick up on feelings or feel ill or anything like that but what I find most interesting about this piece of footage is actually a voice that we picked up just before I really threw in the towel and freaked out and said I need to get out there is a voice it sounds very much like a male voice while we're doing the spirit box and it seems to be saying my name it sounds very much like it says Amy and I gotta tell you I'll play it for you guys take a really close listen to it because to me it doesn't sound like it's coming through the spirit box it actually sounds like maybe there's someone in the room with us and they say Amy and straight after they say it I'm like that's it I'm out I gotta go let me out kind of thing so it's interesting that we got that response and then it was paired with me okay let's go I actually feel a bit sick, I need to get out of here. Now, a little bit later on in the night, we did venture back into the exact same area of the fort. And I didn't really get any weird feelings, like I wasn't overcome with illness or any other sensations. But there is something that we picked up on the camera audio that very much sounds like a woman humming, which doesn't appear to be me, it doesn't appear to be Jared, we were in the room alone. It makes it difficult to say that this was a EVP or something paranormal because we are moving around at the time and we are both talking. But I'll play the audio and the clip for you guys now, take a close listen. It really sounds like there's a woman there with us. We didn't really explore down here. I think there's a hole in the ground up here, so be careful. Oh, really? 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 Okay, guys, on to our last location. This is my number one spot for the year and I've honestly saved a special one from my home here in South Australia that is the old Adelaide jail now this place is thought to be incredibly haunted it functioned as a maximum security prison for 147 years processing some 300,000 prisoners there's also been a lot of death there at the old Adelaide jail when you start thinking about murders suicides disease then there was also 45 executions by hanging that occurred there on the grounds of the jail. Now the first pieces of evidence that I want to discuss with you guys are actually ones that involve the REM pod. Now this is a piece of paranormal equipment if you don't know a lot about it. It's actually a proximity sensor so if anything gets close to it, goes near it, it will trigger sound and flashing lights. 
Now we actually use this in one of the most haunted buildings of the jail, which is known as the new building. And whilst we were using it, it really felt like someone was there playing a game with us. It was as if it was messing with us. So every time that we went to leave the area that we had placed the REM pod to investigate another, you know, section or wing of the new building, it would trigger and it would go off. Whenever we would stop rolling the camera, it would trigger and it would go off. And I'll show you some footage now where we, we tried to play the game back and trick the REM pod because we were saying, oh, we'll turn the camera off, we're leaving now, we're leaving. And it does trigger. It felt like something was just messing with us. The pod down, the way just went off because we shut off the camera and then we were just collecting up some gear to move. <laughs> and boom, that goes off and we miss it. But I promise it went off, guys. Did All you right. just, are you messing with me? Do you not like it or something? Why don't I pretend to shut the camera off again? Let's go. Alright, see ya. I'm going down the other end of the jail where things are better. I'm going to go around A wing. A wing, yeah. Now, the most interesting piece of REM pod activity, I believe, was actually what we captured inside the hanging tower. Now, this is actually a former guard tower that was converted for a place that they could do executions. I don't think they actually hanged too many people in here before they stopped doing those executions at the jail. But there had been a number of deaths in there and people have reported some pretty sinister paranormal things occurring in here. Now, I actually placed the REM pod on top of the trap door, so when you get hanged, trapdoor drops out below you and I know that that's a really creepy place to put it but that is where we put it. It actually went off a couple of times, it went off on command as well when I asked it to go towards the REM pod, it actually triggered which was really amazing. Can you go towards that red light and we'll trap? Okay, you can go towards it. Thank you. Now, other than the REM pods going off, we also had some pretty weird sounds and noises going on within the jail. Some of these were actually on command as well. So when we asked for something to happen, you'd get like a knock or a tap, which was kind of interesting too. Can you make a noise on the stairs? Came from the top of the stairs, right? Yeah. Now, during this investigation, we also decided to do some lone vigils. So, at one point, Jared and I actually split up. He went into one cell, I went into my own cell. We got lo locked within these cells. And these were actually places where they put condemned prisoners. So, they were there in solitary and they were there basically awaiting their execution. A lot of people have reported strange occurrences to happen in there, and I can tell you what. We picked up some pretty interesting things in the cell that I sat in alone. The first of those things, being an ovulus response. If you guys don't know what that is, it's again a piece of paranormal equipment and it measures environmental things going on around it, which could correlate to a database filled with words. And when certain triggers are reached, then you might get a word and people believe that spirits can interact with the environment to select these words and hence communicate with you. I did get a word that I felt was quite relevant to what I was doing at the time. Now I was messing around with these balls that we use, it's just another piece of equipment. And as I was doing that, my camera was kind of hung around my neck and it was swaying right in front of the ovulus. And then it said to me, camera. So I felt like that was quite intelligent. Okay, so I've got a cat ball here. Oh, no way. This literally just said camera to me. Did you just say that to me? 
For me though, that is not the coolest piece of evidence that I picked up in this cell. And this piece of evidence I only realised that I had captured later when I was editing. And it's a piece of audio that very much sounds like a deep male breath. Now you've got to remember that I was in this cell alone and when you watch the footage it really does not look like this breath comes out of me. It seems as though there is someone else in the cell with me. Now the most interesting part about this is you hear the breath and then straight after that I say oh I'm getting mad chills guys as if I just had a sudden drop in temperature that I could actually physically feel. So paired that with the breath that I didn't realize had occurred at the time that makes it a lot more interesting. You don't want me to get out do you? Mad chills right now. Mad chills. <laughs> Now another reason that I really wanted to highlight the old Adelaide Jail here for you guys is there was actually another experience that I had there where I actually saw something with my own eyes. Now I'm not going to be talking about it today because we did not capture this on camera which is very very sad but I saw something that was pretty cool so I'm thinking maybe this belongs in a separate video where I can tell you about this experience and it'll be more of maybe a story time. So please let me know if you would even be interested in hearing about that. Now I do hope that you guys liked this video. I thought it was something a little bit different and a little bit fun to close out the year. It's really nice to reflect on everything that we've been through together in 2019. Please let me know your thoughts as well on all of these pieces of evidence. Are there any that you know, are your favourite or anything that you think is really compelling. Maybe there's some pieces here that you don't think are paranormal at all and that is totally fine. I always respect scepticism. So if you've got an idea about what something could be, then please leave me a comment. I always love to hear about it. You guys know I really love to hear from you. You really make my day every time that you leave me a comment. It is greatly appreciated. Now remember as well guys, 2020 is coming in hot. And I am just so excited for the new year. Not that 2019 hasn't been great for all us Crypt Keepers. 2020 is gonna be even better. I have a lot of big surprises in the works. I'm hoping to travel again and just bring you guys more spooky content from all around the world. The most haunted places in the world, guys. So if you did enjoy this video, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. You know, that really, really does help me out. If you want to do any more reading on any of these locations or any of the other haunted places that I have visited, head to my website, amyscrypt.com. You guys can also keep up with me at amyscrypt on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, Crypt Keepers. Until next time.